to turn to that down to texturing for Blender. Hey, what's up? Gleb Alexandrov here for CreativeShrimp.com and welcome to another very exciting texturing tutorial for beginners. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you top 14 ways to mix textures and materials in Blender. The real materials around us are very complex. They have many different layers. So the key to creating realistic materials is knowing how to approach this layering of stuff in the shader. First of all, I should mention that Jerry Perkins, you may know him as Master Zion, has given us this amazing robot to experiment with. And if you haven't checked his jaw-dropping add-on called Hard Ops, check it out, really, because it's a killer add-on for hard surface modeling. Alright, a big shout out to Jerry, and we'll be using this model to demonstrate top 14 ways to mix textures and materials. So keep watching. Okay, here's the first way to mix textures and materials to mix it by polygons. Okay, as I've said, we have this awesome model by Master Zion. It's a robot, it's called Do. Okay, what I'm gonna do first is add the new material. I'm gonna call it red material instead of the gray material. I'm choosing the reddish color. Pressing tab to enter the edit mode, select faces. Then I'm gonna select some faces. It's very easy, just right click or press C to invoke the brush selection. And then I'm just pressing the assign button and you can see that the part of the model became red. And you can hover the cursor over the model part and press L to select the whole part. That's very useful. I'm going to select a few more polygons, click assign and bam, they became red. And I know, I know, probably it's not mixing materials, it's just assigning in different polygons and different materials, but I should mention it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the second way to mix materials is to use the object ID. Imagine you have a separate objects, but you want to use just one material. You can assign these objects to different IDs. Then in the node editor, you can use the object ID to mix between the different textures, for example. So here I'm just recreating this setup using the gray and the red color, my favorite colors. Then I added the mix color node and you can see we can interpolate between these two colors, obviously. Now watch this. I've added the object info node, plugged the object index into the mix factor, and we see nothing. And why so? Because we need to go to the object tab and change the index of the object. And what the heck happened? As I've said, we can mix between different things based on the object ID. But what if you want to assign the different numbers like 2? Okay, there is a solution. You have to use the math node, then select the greater than option and choose the value, say 1. And then if the object ID is greater than 1, the second color will be mixed in. Or you can choose the less than node and say pick the 2, less than 2. My brain is probably gonna explode if I keep calculating. Okay, let's move on to the point number 3. You can mix materials and texture by random. And once again, to be able to mix textures and materials by random, you just have to separate your model into parts like you see here. And isn't that sexy if you can scale the object this way or rotate it? I think it's unbelievably awesome. Alright, so I'm gonna add the object info node once again, but this time I'm gonna choose the random input and plug it into the mix factor. Bam, and instantly you can see that each part of our awesome robot got different material, or rather a different shade of red. Mm -hmm. And let's add the color ramp node to be able to control it. And you can preview it by pressing Ctrl Shift, but you need to have the node Wrangler at dawn enabled. And then by manipulating the sliders, you can control the fall off. I know it can be a little bit tricky, but you can also press Ctrl and left click to add a new sliders. And by sliding these sliders around, you can create really intricate distribution uh, between the red and the gray materials. It sounds a bit weird. Intricate distribution. Fantastic. And here's the fourth way to mix materials, to paint the mask in 3D. First, let's jump into the edit mode, select all the polygons, press U and hit Smart TV Project. I just want to make a quick unwrap of the model, because we'll be painting texture 
and we need to have the UV map in place. So let's enter the texture pane mode and the bright pink color indicates that we need to add the diffuse color that I'm gonna do right now. Name it mask, set the resolution to 2048. I've also chosen the white color because we'll be painting mask using the black color. I guess it's the matter of personal preference, but I like to do it this way. And if you have a tablet, this process is very enjoyable, but you know, I'm too lazy to switch it on. I'm just using mouse to paint this mask. I, I guess this will be enough to demonstrate the concept. Okay, so imagine we've finished painting our awesome mask. Let's go to the node editor by pressing Shift F3. Now add the image texture and select this mask and connect it to the mix factor input. As usual, add the color ramp and invert these guys. Of course, you can not only paint this mask by hand, you can also use textures. Click New, go to the textures menu, select the brush texture, hit open and choose the file with the texture. And now let's select the stencil mode. I want to use this texture as a stencil to paint on the model. Use right mouse button to position the stencil and draw on it. You can also use shift right mouse button to scale and also control the right mouse button to rotate the stencil. Now we pressed save all images to save all images and you can see how we spoiled everything with the paint. I think that looks pretty good. That looks like a blood stains. And now I'll be showing you yet another technique of texture blending. Let's project the mask. First I'm gonna go to the texture paint mode, then I'm gonna press T to open this tab. Go to the options tab, make sure that the normal is enabled. Uh, then I'm gonna go to the user preferences file and select Krita, the image editing software, as the image editor. And before actually painting the texture, I'm gonna set the resolution to 2048, then press quick edit. And hopefully it will launch Krita and now we can add another layer and start painting. I'm gonna quickly demo it by selecting the hard brush and start painting. Okay, now I'm actually using my tablet, but I'm a very lazy person anyway, so it will be a rubbish and very quick paint over. I'm gonna paint the hard ops here and if you haven't checked it out, do it right now because you won't regret. And now I'm gonna disable the background layer, press file, save, Okay, and after doing it, I'll go back to Blender, hit apply, and bam! We have our texture projected onto the surface of the model. That's brilliant. Save all images, go to the object mode, as usual create the color ramp node, invert the sliders, and it's a very, very quick and efficient way to apply the mask to your model, to mix between two materials or textures. That's a killer feature, and now it's time to use the second UV map, so picture this, you already have your material uh, set up and you just want to place one decal. And one of the quickest ways to do it is to add a second UV map. I'm going to call it UV map 02. No, UV map decal will fit better. Then select it in the UV map node. And actually I've made a mistake. I have to add the image texture too. But I'll do it in just a second. Let's enter edit mode, select all the polygons by pressing A and move it out of view by scaling it. Now let's enter the front view by pressing 3 on the numpad. Select the polygons, press U and select project from view. This is probably the quickest way to obtain the UV island. Actually here I'm gonna fix my error and add the image texture and select uh, the decal. The logo of the hard ops. Okay, let's scale this UV island. And you can see our decal got repeated a few times and we don't want it to happen. So I'm gonna add the mapping node and hit the min and max and it will completely crush this problem. So now we have our decal in place. So the second UV map and the image with the transparency is a very effective combo. Number seven is using procedural textures. I'm gonna add the Voronoi texture Take the color input, plug it over here and switch to cells mode. It will create the hard edge chips or cells. And as usual, you can fine tune it using the color ramp node. And to play with the mapping, I'm gonna add the mapping node. Surprise, surprise. 
and then I'm gonna add the input texture coordinates node and select the generated coordinates. Now we can tweak the location, for example. Uh, this is a real 3D noise. It sort of projects from every direction automatically. You don't have to use the UV coordinates. And now I'm gonna slightly distort the generated coordinates of this noise using other noise. So I've added the mix node before the Voronoi texture. And now I'm using the noise texture to make the whole thing look more organic. You can switch to the add mode or to multiply. It doesn't matter that much. Hopefully it will add a bit of a variation. Then I'm gonna tweak the scale of the Voronoi texture itself. And one of the benefits of the procedural noises uh, compared to textures is that they have an infinite uh, resolution, so to speak. You can zoom in and still see the details. And it's awesome, I think. Right, another way to mix textures is to use the tile textures with the box mapping. Add the image texture. I'm gonna select this metal composite texture. And it's nothing special. It's just a few layers of metals composed together. And this texture is seamless. So when it will get repeated, you won't see the seam. As usual, add the color ramp, crank up the values uh, to better see the effect of these textures. And if you have the node Wrangler or Dawn enabled, you can just select the texture, then press Ctrl T, and these nodes will be added automatically. Okay, and it's better not to use the UV coordinates here, because it gets very messy. We have to use the generated coordinates and select the box mapping. When you use the box mapping, the texture is being projected from six directions at once. And you don't even have to UV unwrap the model. Isn't it cool after all? So I'm going to tweak the scale a little bit more to achieve a more appealing look, I guess. So I got something like that, and I like the result. It's a very cool way to mix different materials or textures. It doesn't matter at all. All right, now let's see how you can mix different textures using the object normals. I'm going to go ahead and add the geometry node. And we need the normal input. So create the normal node and we need to use the dot output as the mix factor. To be able to better control the falloff, let's add the color ramp node. And as I'm rotating the sphere, you can see how the colors get mixed based on the direction of the surface. And we can simulate a ton of different effects using just this normal input. We can, for example, simulate the dust, snow, pretty much every other effect that is largely based upon the direction of the surface. Okay, fine. that was the point number nine, very exciting stuff. And now let's talk about how you can mix textures based on the model height, or we can say elevation. I'm gonna use this mountain as an example. Let's add the texture coordinate, separate X, Y, Z node, connect the generated input over here. Then I'm gonna use just the Z coordinate to mix between these two colors. And I bet my five cents you already noticed how often we use the color ramp node. And it's a real lifesaver in so many different situations. So we're gonna use it once again. I'm gonna create a bunch of sliders to create a crazy variation of stratas based on the height. And another parameter related to the landscapes is of course the slope. Being able to control the blending factor based on the object slope is a very handy tool. It's like a screwdriver of 3D, I don't know. Once again, let's add the separate X, Y, Z node and connect the normal input this time to it. Now connect the Z output to the mix factor. Let's add the color ramp and voila, you have the total control over the mix factor based on the steepness or the slope of the model. And if you wanna go deeper, you can think about combining these two parameters, the height and the slope, to get a really, really, I mean, really intricate mix factors for your awesome realistic materials. And now let's play with the vertex color. Personally, I rarely use this tool because it relies so much on the object polygon density, but still it can be useful in some cases, so I will show you how to do it. Let's go to the vertex paint mode by pressing V, then select the black color and just paint across the surface. And immediately you can see how the underlying geometry, the polygon density affects uh, the quality, so to speak, of this paint. And interpolation obviously is much better when we use a high poly model. Now in the node editor, add the input, vertex colors, and it's called Co. 
And you can use our superhero node, the color ramp node, in this case too. Invert these sliders. And there is one feature that I want to show you in the vertex paint. It's called Dirty Vertex Colors. When you activate it, it kind of calculates the ambient occlusion for the model. You can set the blur strength, the dirt angle, and so on. Honestly, I think that the pointiness attribute that I will show you in a second is doing a much better job with calculating the crevices and the edges and so on. But still, knowing that you can mix between two materials based on vertex color can be useful in some cases. Oh dear, what cases? Good grief. Okay, now the super useful stuff, very exciting. It's called pointiness. And that, guys and girls, is a real way to find the edges and the crevices of your model. Let's create the geometry node and use the pointiness node in conjunction with the color ramp node. And you can see that it feeds the information about the edges into the mix factor. And you can make this effect a little bit more interesting by using noise to distort that information about the edges. And I should say that the pointiness depends on the poly count of the model too. But fortunately, we can use the subdivision modifier with this one. And it's perfect. It makes my inner nerds very happy. I'm almost dancing. So let's see how it works. I just go to modifiers tab, add the subdivision surface, and switch to the simple mode. Because we don't want to smooth the model, we just want to add the polygons. And after you add the subdivision surface, you'll notice how the pointiness attribute works differently. Now the effect is far, far more detailed, and it can find more fine edges. And of course, this way to mix textures is fully procedural and non-destructive. And that is something we should cherish. And thanks, Blender developers. You're rock stars. Okay. Okay, and here's the last way to mix textures for today, is to mix textures based on the distance, using the dynamic paints. What I'm going to do is to add the canvas in the dynamic paint properties. Enable anti-aliasing to smooth the edges. Disable the dry option. And we will use so-called wet map. So click on it and select your vertex colors. And I'm going to create the torus. It will serve as a brush for our dynamic paints. Position it over here. Name it dynamic paint brush to keep things organized. And actually, let's disable its visibility in the object tab. I don't want it to appear in the render. Add a dynamic paint. Select the brush option. Click on the paint source and select mesh volume plus proximity. Now jump to frame number zero in the timeline. That will allow us to preview the effect in real time. That is awesome. And we can also play with the fall off of the effect, but I'll just leave it as it is. And also I'll change the color to black because it will allow us to create the black and white mask. Okay, position it. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And now let's go to the node editor. Press Shift A, select the input vertex colors, plug it over here into the mix factor, and it works. It simply works and it is amazing. The color ramp will help us to establish the fall off, and you can drag it around and see how it works. Or, for example, change the paint distance, or enable the checkbox that says negate volume to negate volume. Well, Blender has a really good interface. What you can also do, you can duplicate the brush objects, and there are so many different uses for this dynamic paint effect. I love it so much. Okay, and this was the 15th and the last for today way to blend between different materials and textures. If you like what you just saw, make sure to press thumbs up and share this video with other nerds. And of course, check out the Master Zion YouTube channel. You'll find amazing tutorials there. My name's Gleb Alexandrov. Drink more coffee and we'll change the world of computer graphics on creativeshrimp.com.